What's going on, everybody? It is finally time for week one of the NFL season. You won't believe the 1-13 in ATS angle I've got for you on the show today. Plus, learn which teams you should consider selling high and buying low on, how the market is moving, and a free play, our power play of the day. Let's get right into how the market is moving. Obviously, so much to cover here since these lines have been out for a while. But as of Saturday morning, this is where we've seen the most movement and the most interesting movement, okay, per the wagertalk.com odd screen. Panthers, Falcons, under. That number has moved from 43.5 to 39.5. The Bengals, who are at Cleveland, have curiously dropped from plus or from minus two and a half to minus one and a half at some shops, despite Joe Burrow uh, being announced as a go. Minnesota is down to minus five after opening minus six and a half versus Tampa Bay. The Packers are now plus one and a half after they opened plus three. They had touched as low as plus one for that NFC North matchup, which they have owned through the years 13 uh, of the last 14 times Green Bay has beaten Chicago. What line moves do you think are the most interesting? Why don't you go ahead and let me know in the comments section here on YouTube, and we can get a nice discussion about that going all Sunday long. On to sell high. It looks like betters thought minus 5.5 was too high for the Jaguars at Indianapolis. Now, division dogs have traditionally been the way to go in week one of the NFL season, 61% ATS since 2005. So that's a reason to back the Colts, but Indy does have a first-year head coach, a rookie quarterback, and their star running back is holding out. For the record, rookie quarterbacks in week one on a 3-13-1 ATS run. Not great if you're Anthony Richardson. That said, Jacksonville figures to be one of the most public sides on the board in week one. I'll have more on this game with our stat of the day. By low, it is interesting, to me at least, that the number really hasn't moved much for Houston, Baltimore, the spread that is. Texans currently plus nine and a half or plus 10, depending on your book. This is another team from the AFC South with a first year head coach and rookie quarterback. Now, we haven't had a double digit favorite in week one going all the way back to 2019. John Harbaugh, he may be the most profitable week one ATS coach in recent memory, 11 and four against the spread. But check this out when Lamar Jackson is under center, the Ravens have struggled as favorites recently. In fact, when laying more than three points, Jackson's just 1-11 against the spread the last two seasons. Houston, yes, Houston, may be a team to buy low on in week one. Stat of the day, I teased it earlier. Back to Jags Colts. Indianapolis is a horrific 2-12-1 straight up and 1-13-1 against the number in week one going back to 2008. So uh, we've got a lot of contradictory information on that matchup. We've got a home dog. You know, typically home dogs are great in week one, but their history isn't so great. But like I said, Jackson is going to be a public side come Sunday. All right, before we get to our power play of the day this week, just a reminder that if you like what you hear here, uh, be sure to smash that like button, give this show a thumbs up, and make sure you are subscribed to the Wager Talk YouTube channel where we have a ton of of great sports betting content each and every day, including a preview on each of the remaining 15 NFL Week 1 matchups. Head on over, check that out right now. Power play of the day for Sunday is going to be Tampa Bay plus the points. I've had this up as a free play on my page for months now. I predicted the number would go down, which is exactly what has happened. Talked about that a minute ago. Bottom line, the Vikings this year are a massive candidate for regression. Uh... They went 11-0 straight up in one-score games last season. They had a negative point differential despite 13 wins. That was an NFL first. Only five times since 2020 have the Vikings won a game by more than one possession. Yes, I know Tampa Bay was a league worst for 13-1 ATS last season, and they say goodbye to Tom Brady. But Brady was not particularly good last season. Let's No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Let's not sugarcoat it one iota, okay? He was afraid to get hit. And only once, once, all of last year, were the Bucks underdogs of more than three and a half points. I like the Bucks plus the points at the Vikings on Sunday. And that'll do it for the Power 5 for week one of the NFL season. Check me out on Twitter at Brian Power underscore wins. You can get all my plays at wt.buzz backslash bp. I'll have uh, more for you coming up this week. Until then, let's catch some tickets.